<laughs> All right, first topic, I have X factors for each Sweet 16 team. And what I mean by this, I know you talked about most important players earlier this week, but this one is more so like if X happens, this team can make the final four. So you could pick a player or a group of players. You could pick a style of play, something they need to execute. Uh, it's generally open-ended, but for the sake of time, we're not all three going to weigh on each Sweet 16 team, but we'll just move on down the line and one person gets to pick the X factor for each. Love it. Okay, let's do it. Uh, we do want to have the caveat. This will come out Friday morning. So some of the games have already played. That's okay. We're going to project as if uh, maybe we know what's going to happen in the Thursday night games. So uh, I'll just read off teams. We're going to go in order of the time of the games because I'm looking at the ESPN app. Uh, Riley, you assign who you want to give the X factor. First team is Clemson. I can take that one. Um, in order for Clemson to make the final four, they got to keep this Chase Hunter hot streak going. He had over 20 points in both their first two games. You need him to produce. And I guess you could lump in the backcourt as a whole. Uh, they, I think in order to beat Arizona, they need both Hunter and Joe Girard on. I like that uh, shout. All right, sake of time, we're going to keep it moving. Arizona. Let's go, Greg. As simple as this, they need Caleb Love to not ruin himself publicly in a game like he, he can't go three for 21 from the floor and he probably will at some point but if he keeps avoiding that he's done it two straight games if they get the exact Caleb Love they got the first two games I think Arizona wins this region relatively easily and then is probably staring UConn down in the final four should be interesting San Diego State uh let's go known Jaden Ledee do I want, dare I say hater? Dare I say appreciator? Somewhere in between Carter Elliott. I was going to say you go with the guy that looks like him. Um, I think the X factor for San Diego State is, I'm going I'm to say Darion Trammell, actually. I'm going to say Darion Trammell because I think that Butler does enough to help out Ladee most of the times, but Trammell has kind of had, at least in my opinion, a, a drop off from what I thought he would be. Uh, from what he did last year coming into this season. Um, and he has shown in the big moments in the Elite Eight last in the Sweet 16 and Elite Eight last year that he can make the winning plays mm -hmm. to kind of get them over the hump. And if he if there's so much focus on the D, and then if there's no focus on the D, then it's on Butler, probably most likely. I think there'll be a chance for Tramel to make a play. So if they do go to a final four, Tramel, I think, is gonna have to be a massive factor in that. I like that shout. All right, UConn. Greg. <sighs> UConn needs – it's hard because, like, they're so damn solid. They just need, like, the other team to not go nuclear from three, I feel like, and they're fine. I will say UConn needs to avoid distraction. That's the X factor. Like, I, I want – to know that Hurley is just not distracted by some craziness that has nothing to do with the game that's unfolding in front of him. As long as he's not fighting a fan. I think these players are so good that they're, they're perfectly fine. Alabama. Part. Alabama will make a final four. If they can somehow encompass what Grant Nelson was doing on those highlight tapes before he came to Bama. For real, like because I think that this team, and it might be wrong, but I, in my opinion, this team wants Aaron Estrada to be Robin so bad, and I think he's just an awful Robin. And I know that he has the ability to go off, and he has in games this year. But if it's Sears Nelson like Batman Robin, and that includes Nelson playing to the level that I think he has shown, and not being somewhat a little bit, a little bit tentative at times mm -hmm. um i think that would really unlock things with this team instead of the whole sears estrada portion of it i agree with that 100 percent uh i couldn't be more out on estrada just for the record north carolina riley i assume you're taking this one yeah i would say bench play if they can get consistent contributions from seth trimble jalen washington and jalen withers like any, if any of them can contribute anywhere from six to 10 points, I think that helps a lot. Cause a lot of these teams that are left, um, you know, we talked about this a few weeks ago with six man of the year discussions, uh, pretty much every team has shaky bench play or maybe not shaky, but streaky bench play. And if you can just get one of those dudes to be reliable, come and make a big play. I think that'll help them be to beat both presumably Arizona and Alabama. Hmm. Good shout. 
agree with that. Illinois? I can take this, and then I want to open it up to y'all to see what you would say. I think this Arizona team could benefit from getting Marcus Damas to the line more. Because I DeMass. think – yeah, and I could be off base. I don't know Illinois like y'all do, but just looking at this matchup with Iowa State that is so physical defensively, if Damask is able to get their guys in foul trouble um, and get to the line – I feel like that's going to help their chances to make sure that, I mean, it's tough to say that like you don't, uh, there aren't many critiques you could give this offense. It's the number one offense in the country, but I feel like against a defense like this, getting points at the charity stripe will be tantamount to their success. Especially against Iowa state. Um, I know this is coming out after that game, but hundred percent, like they, they need free points. I like that shout card. Do you, uh, anything you would add on Illinois? Um, Let's see here. Uh, it, it, it's this. This is kind of broad, but and I'm not sure. I'm I'm actually gonna lob it to you, Greg, and see if you can like finish my thought somewhat here. Uh, it, it's something mental about where this team needs to needs to be mentally. Um, because right now they're playing with so much confidence, and the only thing in the back of my head that scares me is that like they're confident because of like who they've been playing. Right. They've been confident because they've avoided the big bad wolf. Like they avoided Purdue up until it on this run. Iowa State to me is a big bad wolf type team. So I'm interested to see where they are mentally, you know, once that once they go up against Iowa State. So I, I guess mental yeah. is, is kind of what I'd say. Yeah, I think I I framed it in the Discord as like one thing I'm worried about for Illinois is the the moment they realize they're playing a really, really good team and that that's different because I think in Illinois heads, they think they are rolling right now, playing a new level. They haven't. And none of the analytics show that that's true. The The analytics show that they have played one tourney caliber team in the last two weeks. And it was Wisconsin and that was a dog fight. So uh, even Ohio state, they had to come back in the second half. Uh, Nebraska was very close for the first 20 minutes. Duquesne, I've talked about, it. they're worse than Penn State. You get a Duquesne team that's worse than Penn State in the round of 32, you feel very fortunate. There's going to be a moment very early in the Iowa State game where everybody looks around and realizes, holy shit, this is a top five team in the country. And uh, are they ready for that moment? I guess we'll have to see. For that reason, I would say Illinois needs to get off to good starts more than any team in this tournament. Like if they're up 10, I trust this team a lot more than if they're down 10-0 immediately and trying to scramble and figure it out. Uh, the final team here would be the team they're playing, Iowa State. I'll take this one as well. And uh, also kind of want your feedback here. I think Kasha, excuse me, Kashan Gilbert and Milan Mamsilovic need to play like the best prospects on the team that I think they are. I think these are Iowa State's two best NBA prospects. Uh, even I take Gilbert over Lipsy because of the size. I think he gets to the line a ton. Uh, wasn't very efficient in their last game. I think he was only three for 14 from the floor against Wazoo. And then Mamsilovic, you need that guy who showed up against Houston, had 18 points. Uh, but of course, it's easier to do that when you're in a game that you're up 20 than it is if it gets tight down the stretch. But what do y'all think? I think these are probably the two most interesting ones with Illinois and Iowa State, especially since they got presumably UConn lurking. Yeah, I, I feel the same way. I, I mean, we pointed out in the other exercise that we did with Monchilovich, so I won't go deeper in that. But Gilbert is a guy that Greg and I have talked about, like even coming into the tournament, that like he needs to be that that guard like I, I love what Lipsy does all around as the point guard of the team but we're talking about a guy who can score the ball in bunches go off carry the scoring load uh Gilbert's that guy mm -hmm. yeah I, I I like the mom she live shout um I think what if he's the only guy on the team I think can like effortlessly just get them 15 points some games without trying and if that happens then they're their defense is so good. They're usually going to win those games. There's also games where he is like completely not heard from. And then those right. are the games their their offense stagnates. So I like that shout a lot. Okay. To the Friday games. Uh, we'll start with the earliest one. NC state. Part. Mm. The other DJ, the other DJ, the one without the vending machines, the one that's not doing interviews the one that can score in absolute bunches, the one who flipped off referees earlier in the season, that DJ needs to be special because when it comes down to it, guard play is massive in March. 
So I, I'd say DJ Horn. The other DJ. Wow. Fascinating. Marquette? I'll give that to you, Greg. Kolick needs to be the best player on the court. Uh, if we're talking how does this team win a national championship, he needs to, no-brainer, be the best player on the court, prove people like me and Cart wrong who have doubted him his entire career. He's obviously a great point guard. Now we're going to see if he's that great of a point guard. He gets NC State in this round. He's the best player on the floor, no doubt. I think he's going to shred that defense with DJ Burns. Uh, if they win that game, you're looking at Houston. Can he outplay Jamal Shedd? Can he find answers against that defense? Or you get Duke. Jeremy Roach has been to a Final Four. He started on that game. Jeremy McCain's unstoppable right now. Can Kolick actually carry a team and be the face of it? That's my question. Uh, Gonzaga. Greg, I'm going to let you double up. Take the Zags. Ooh! Uh, this might be a cop-out. I'm going I'm to call it like this, though. Mark Few needs to masterclass his way to a national championship. I think that... Uh, we're in this weird state in the sport right now where all the coaches who had repeatedly won championships and done this before all chose to leave. I'm talking Jay Wright. I'm talking Coach K. I'm talking all these men who have just decided, yeah, not for me anymore. I'm out. Goodbye. Roy Williams as well. Um, Mark Few is one of the three or four best coaches in college basketball still, and he hasn't won the big one, but he's been to Final Fours. And he's in a region full of guys who collapse in March. He's got Matt Painter first, then he's got Rick Barnes or Greg McDermott. There is absolutely a world here where Mark Few just pulls a rabbit out of his hat. And we speculated in November, like, you know, maybe it's it's the Gonzaga team nobody sees coming that becomes the special one. And it's a legacy moment for Mark Few. That's kind of how this went. They didn't win either of the titles, but they're playing their best ball at the right time right now. Top five teams since February 1st. And uh, if you look at how they've won some of these games, like what they did to Kansas, Connor Hope called it out on the preview. They just find whatever action works and they just run it over and over and over again, 20 times. And the other coaches don't adjust. And I think that could absolutely happen against a team built around Zach Eady defensively, put the pressure on Matt Painter, few beats Painter head to head and the wheels are off. Purdue. Hart. Hmm. You know, I was close to saying, I was close to saying paint, but I think I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna stick with Fletch on this one. I think they need a third guy, and I don't trust Lance to be that third guy. I think Fletch can be that third guy, and Fletch has the body of work where he torches teams in big games, like he torched the Tennessees of the world, like he hooped in the Arizona game. Like those are all like top three C's in each of the region, like Fletch being the quote unquote big game Fletch that he is at this portion is going to be massive for them. Cause I, I, cause we know what Edie, Edie and Braden are going to do. Yeah, I agree. I like that shout. They need him. also, why hasn't anyone referred to Edie and Braden as like Eden? Like wow. that's just a, I mean, that's, there's gotta be some type of just NIL deal out there for that. A lot, so much. Uh, theology, today. religious imagery. <laughs> yeah, Garden of Eden. I like it. Uh, Duke. I can take this one. I think defense. Uh, they've. <laughs> I'll go ahead. I'll go ahead and take the Duke one. <laughs> I mean, I am the ACC guy. No, nah, I think they they have to continue to guard like they have these first two rounds. Um, I said this on our preview or our recap with of the Vermont game. Vermont kept trying to spread Duke out, get Kyle Filipowski out of the paint, which actually worked in his favor. He's very good at moving his feet on the perimeter. He's a lot more comfortable doing that than I think he is guarding guys in the post. Uh, luckily for him, I could be off base on this, so correct me if I'm wrong. Juwan Roberts coming in beat up to where I don't think Houston's necessarily going to throw the ball to him down low and let him cook. So if Duke can continue to defend how they have, they, I mean, it's going to be right there to beat Houston. I like that. I agree. Okay, Houston. Mm, Greg. Hmm. I think ah, I don't like saying this player because I'm I'm skeptical on him. I think they need LJ Cryer to carry the the load offensively. And I've been pretty underwhelmed with LJ. I know he's had very good games this year. He's also had like complete stinkers. I didn't expect that. I thought he would come in and be like 
a no-brainer top two or three player in the Big 12 in that offense. Uh, to me, I don't trust him as the first option offensively of a Houston team, which is part of why I like Duke to actually win this game. But that's another story. They need him to be a superstar if they're going to win a title. Creighton? All right, let's, uh, let's hear you talk about your Jays. There comes a time when you stare somebody across from you that everyone says is better than you. And you look at it and you say, what, you, what are you going to do about it? Like, what are you really going to do about it? Like, if I came face to face with another light-skinned podcaster and he was better than me, I'd expect me to step up. I'd take that as a challenge. I'd be ready for that. I want to do that. I want that. And that's what Baylor Shireman has to do. Baylor Shireman's a bad man. And I just want that to be known. And I think Baylor Shireman is going to put the world on notice that he is one of the baddest men in college basketball against the aforementioned baddest man in college basketball besides Zach Eady and Dalton Connect. Baddest man is crazy. I mean, I'm going to give you a lot of credit if this comes to fruition, but like, I feel like you've just like put your name on the 12th best player in the sport as if he's the best player in the sport. And I don't know. I haven't heard this from you all year. It like it emerged in the last week. Work in silence sometimes. <laughs> it's fascinating to me. <laughs> Tennessee, final one, Tennessee. I'll take Tennessee. And I'm going to say Jonas Adu, getting them some easy buckets around the rim. If you look at what he did against Texas, four for 12 from the field, that was a game that turned into a slog. Texas dragged them into the mud. Granted, Tennessee is very comfortable winning that way. But they're playing a lot better teams in Texas down the stretch. And I think if the offense breaks down, just in case Connect has another off night, you need someone who can get you some easy looks around the rim. I, I don't trust Santi Vescovi to get right. I think I love Zakai Ziegler, but he can be a little erratic. Josiah Jordan James, not much of a scorer. I think they got to get it. They It's got to be Jonas Adu who can get them some, some looks down low. Uh, I like that. I think that is needed. Uh, also, this is a legacy bet game for Carter and I. Tennessee Creighton will be in the building for this, but the loser has to buzz cut their hair. Uh, Riley, which which side of that do you think has a better chance of winning? I'm on Tennessee. He's on Creighton. I think Tennessee has a better chance of winning, but I think Greg with a buzz cut would be hilarious. <laughs> it would be like a throwback to like a 2009 in your Letterman jacket going out for the football team. <laughs> I'm really scared. For the record, I've never had a buzz cut in my life. Uh, I used to have the mop top in high school, so this would be a first. And I'm honestly, I'm a little afraid it wouldn't grow back if I do this. So It'll, 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 it'll grow back. Uh, what if you like it? It could be the end of my hair. What if you like it? I won't like it. You know, no chance? No. But, like, you got to think of the positives here. Like, you have a beard. Beard with a buzz is honestly a good combo. True. It might work for you. I guess that's true. And you can unlock something right here. can always wear hats as well. Can always wear hats. I guess we'll see. I just need Dalton Connect to, as he scored his 43rd point of the night, look Shireman dead in the eyes and hit this. That'll be my happy moment. We'll see. Okay, fun topic. Thank you for that. Riley, topic number two.